Hi everyone, this is Kim from Three Olives Branch and today we are making this Instant Pot Loaded Baked Potato Soup. It is one of my favorite go-to soups and there's a lot of great ingredients that you can add into it to make it your own, like corn, broccoli, other vegetables, even meats like chicken or sausage. But today we are going to go ahead and make the classic. I'm gonna share with you how to go through this in the Instant Pot, what you'll need and also the steps that are needed. Don't forget to like and subscribe before we get started. I have a lot of other recipes and cocktails that I would love to share with you. I believe in good food being a part of everyone's life. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're getting this soup going by putting on our saute function on the Instapot, which is really just gonna let us cook some of these ingredients down and develop some color and flavor before we put everything in to cook officially. So we're going to add our bacon into the pot. I like to use just the uncooked bacon, cook it right in here because then the fat from this is going to act as the butter or the fat for cooking everything else later. So we're going to let this cook here for a few minutes. You can stir once in a while. Um, eventually the fat is going to render, which means cook down and come off and um, create a pool of that fat in the bottom here while the bacon is crisping. So we're going to let that go for a couple minutes and come back. Okay, you can see the bacon is nice and crispy looking, so we're going to go ahead and fish these out. I am using just a slotted spoon here to make it a little bit easier. Uh, the spoon is... A little bit better at scooping things out of pots like this compared to a spoonula which is like my favorite kitchen tool but sometimes you gotta use something else a little bit different and I'm gonna leave all of the fat in there or at least most of it uh, we're gonna use this to cook up more of our ingredients here in a moment and it's really gonna make not only the bacon flavor go throughout but it will also add a lot of depth all right, so we have the bacon out. Now we're gonna add our onion. Um, you wanna leave all these bits in here because that's gonna bring a lot of flavor, so we're gonna scrape those up later. I'm gonna use about a cup of onion, which was probably like one full small onion or about three quarters of what I consider a medium onion. It's very subjective. Um, so do however much or little as you like. You can do as little as a half a cup if you want, but I'm a huge onion lover. So this is my spoonula that I was talking about. Spoon and spatula, it's amazing. Um, so we're gonna get the onion go around in here on the saute function and let it go for a couple minutes until it's starting to turn translucent which means almost like clear instead of this white color we're going to add a few more ingredients into here once it gets to that place before we get everything cooking in the instant pot all right so it's been just about a minute and you can see that it looks a little bit thicker in here more of like a bubble simmer situation happening instead of just liquid or that bacon fat and we're starting to get a little bit of color so we don't want this to go too far we don't want too much color on it and you can smell the thyme and the garlic it smells so good and that's how you know those spices have opened up so we're gonna get this ready to go for cooking um, so first up i'm going to add the stock you can use chicken or vegetable stock great little sound there as it sizzles with the hot surface so we're gonna stir this i'm gonna try to just kind of scrape up a little bit on the bottom here of those flavors which will continue to pull up later on uh, you can use chicken or vegetable stock whatever you prefer if you want it vegetarian or not and then of course we have our potatoes as well so they have been cut into about an inch or so size pieces um, very similar to what i would do for mashed potatoes and i'm using about three pounds here um, if you don't have a scale, you can just do it by eyesight of, you know, guesstimate a little bit more than half of a five pound bag, about a third of a 10 pound bag, whatever it is that you need. All right. So we have this all stirred and ready to go. These are all the ingredients that we need for now. So what we're going to do is get this going in the Instant Pot. We're going to put the lid on it and set it to high pressure. It's going to take about eight to 10 minutes, depending on factors like how big you cut your potatoes. Um, so we're going to go for eight minutes here. And then when it's done, we'll do a natural release. So our soup lid has been taken off after cooking here. And you can see that the broth is a little bit thicker and creamier. And our potatoes have also grown a little bit in size because they've absorbed some of that moisture. So just have a few last couple steps here to do in order to get this soup finished up. First, we are going to mash some of these potatoes, and you can just use a normal potato masher. I'm gonna use my, my little guy here. Uh, this is a gift that I got from my mom, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's so dumb, I already have a potato masher, but I use it like all the time now. Uh, so it comes in really handy. I use it for jams and other things where you just need a little bit of mashing, but you don't wanna go 
wild or crazy. So we're gonna mash some of those up. It's better to mash less than you think you need, and then you can always mash more if you need to. What the mashing does, it's gonna release some of the starches from the potatoes. You can kind of see how it's getting a little bit whiter right here, where that's happening from the mashing. And the starch being released is going to make it a little bit creamier and also give you a little bit of a smoother texture in your soup. So we're gonna let that go for now because I like chunky soup. And then we're gonna add a few final ingredients. So we have our milk and I like to use whole milk. It is thicker than like 2% or anything like that. So I do recommend it because it won't taste as watery. I actually think that makes a really big difference. And we have cheese. So I like to use good old cheddar. Uh, this is about a cup and a half is what the recipe calls for, but we are cheese lovers. So I normally add about two cups, sometimes more, it just depends on the day. But start here and then add more if you want to. The flavor of the exact cheese that you use is also going to change how much or little you think you might need. And then we do have our bacon pieces. So we're gonna dump these back in here. You could cook it with the bacon in it, but I like to leave it like this because the bacon will keep some of its texture when you are eating the soup later on. All right, so let's mix this up and test it and see if we need to do anything different. All right, the soup is done. I've taken it out of the Instant Pot. First, I made sure that I seasoned it with salt and pepper and cheese as I wanted to, just to make sure the flavor was really great all the way throughout. And then I like to serve it up with a bunch of toppings on top here, just like you would get in a loaded baked potato. Uh, so of course I have a little bit of a sour cream spritz, which is completely optional because the soup is very smooth and creamy already, but I do like the color that it brings and the coolness as well. So the cool, cream is a great contrast to the warm soup as you're eating it. And then I just put a little bit of cheese on top of each bowl. You can imagine some people's bowls are a little bit more loaded up on cheese than others. Um, I also have some extra bacon. I had fried up the entire package of bacon separately so you can definitely put some on top and since this is not from the soup itself it's going to have almost like a crispy crouton like effect so a great te texture contrast there and then also green onions of course not mandatory but you know it is a big part of a baked potato so uh, parsley would also be great or chives uh, chives are just really like super thin little green onions so that is it it's really delicious and very comforting hope you enjoy making this don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more recipes and cocktails i'm happy to share them all with you and thanks for watching along